What's going on, Melon Farmers? DMAC back, and finally, I know you guys have been asking for it. You've been leaving me comments and stuff for the last couple of days. When's the franchise mode starting? When are we getting going on that? Well, I was trying to wait for the uh, the newest roster update. I just been waiting and waiting and waiting, and I checked, and it's still not there. The most recent roster update is the one from October 4th, so we are just going to go with that one. Anyway, we're starting the franchise mode off, and you guys took a vote. Uh, it's been sitting there percolating for several days, and basically, you want the 33-team expansion draft, and you want us to go to Quebec. All right, so we can do it. What is this? Career roster type. Select the roster type you'd like to use. Custom, right? I have that. Custom would be the active roster, right? <laughs> like, the, the custom roster is whichever one I have active, I'm pretty sure. If you go default, I think it does the same thing as, like, be a pro in the Memorial Cup. Where <laughs> it's like, you know, all, all the people that have been traded, all the people that have signed contracts in different teams. It's like that just like reverts back to the original. I think we're going to see. I hope so. Because if it goes custom, there's going to be a ton of created players in this. <laughs> if it uses my custom roster, because I switched it back. I switched the active roster back to the October 4th one before I did this. So my created players should have disappeared and they shouldn't be in this. All right. So. All right, so let's create team. I should already have a team created. No, it doesn't. Okay, okay, hold on. I gotta find my. Uh, I gotta find my notes now because I had all of the uh, custom jersey stuff. I had that all written down. So when we made this franchise mode, it wouldn't take long. I would be able to just very quickly get through it. All right, so here we go. I got the. Uh, yeah, I found. I found all my notes, so we're good. City name is going to be. Let's see, we'll find it way down here. Quebec City, baby. <laughs> Team name, I'm going to go with the Quebec City Combatants. But we're spelling it the French way because it is Quebec. Play-by-play -play team name. I'm sure they've got to have, like, combatants in here somewhere, right? Like, you'd think that would they would have that. <laughs> commandos <laughs> no they don't have combatants uh so you know what we'll go into f where they also do not have fighters oh god what are we gonna use <laughs> oh my goodness they don't have quebec teamwork what what we'll have none they yeah you know what we'll have none <laughs> <laughs> because this is highly disappointing. The arena name. Everybody knows that I love my Pepsi. I don't think I'd like to call it the Pepsi Center, you know, <laughs> because of Colorado back in the day, even though it's Ball Arena now. But uh, I also am quite the fan of coffee. So you know what? We are going to be playing all of our games at the Maxwell House, baby. <laughs> I like this. I saw this before, too. Okay. Owner spending rating, six. Success rating, six. Patience rating, six. I like that you can actually edit this now. I'm going to put owner spending at like five. Uh, success rating we'll put at like three because we are a brand new team. Like they can't expect it. Well, I'll put it at like two and patience rating we'll put it at like four. You know what I mean? You obviously, you want a team that's going to be spending money. This is a brand new team. It's a Canadian team. So you know that they're going to spend money, right? But, I mean, they can't expect you to be, like, super successful right off the hop, right? But the patience rating, put it about four because it is a Canadian market. So it's like, yes, there is some patience there, but they, there is always that bit of pressure to, like, be good right out of the gate, right? Now, Team Prestige, uh, we'll go bottom. Market size, I think it is, Quebec City is a small market, is it not? Is Quebec City a small market? You know what? Let's go medium. I think it's, yeah, local fan base would be, like, hardcore. National fan base, I think, would actually be relatively devoted. The national fan base, if we got another team in Canada, I think would actually be pretty high. So I'm going to say devoted. Local popularity would be high. National popularity would be average, I guess. Uh, concession level. We'll take all this stuff and put it up to two. I'm going to have, like, auto owner mode on, though, so it's not going to matter. Now we got to rebuild these joysies, man. The Quebec City combatants, but it's going to be like combatant. <laughs> I don't know. 
<laughs> Something like that. I don't speak French. All right, here we go. First thing we're going to do, we're going to switch them team colors. Now, I'm going to go get my red. We'll get the red. Secondary color, I'm thinking, is going to be that off-white. And I'm thinking the third color is probably going to be a nice dark gray. I really like that. So for the logo, which one was it? Logo 159, all the way down to 159 for the logo. I actually really like it. It's it's a neat logo. <laughs> but we are going to have to make uh, change these colors on it, right? Apply team colors. I don't mind that. I don't want uh, I don't want the red on on the shafts of the of the axe, and I had I left a comment say, or somebody left a comment saying yeah do like a nice deep brown or something with it, and I think we can work with that. Whoops, I didn't mean to actually back out of that. Okay, so hold on. I was thinking about maybe that brown, but maybe something lighter, like almost like a yellow. Eh, maybe not that one. Or something like that. Something that looks a little more woodsy. Maybe a little bit darker like that. I kind of dig that, you know? Well, we'll see how it looks on the jersey. And uh, if it looks sharp, we'll just stick with it. If it doesn't, we'll go back in and we'll fix it after. I think it all should uh, I think it all should look just fine. So here we go. All we're going to worry about this time, for year one, all we're going to worry about is a home jersey and an away jersey. The jersey is jersey 78. Yeah, it's like I, I pre-built these jerseys. <laughs> and jersey color. So first thing I'm going to do is apply team colors. And then we're going to go and actually, you know what? Hold on. That's not too bad. I do have all the zones and everything. I don't like the white on the shoulders. Um, so it was gray, 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 red. So I think I would go red. Red, gray, gray, red, probably. Something like that. Red, gray. Mm, no, I don't want I don't want the gray on the arms. If we're doing this, we're doing this. That's that's kind of sharp though. I don't mind that. I don't mind that at all. I actually originally had the jersey as like full blown gray with like red and white accents. And everyone's like, mm, I don't know, man, that's a little iffy. <laughs> but uh on the away jerseys. They're white and the shoulders are red. So I'm like, well, I do want to I do want to make the shoulders a different color for both jerseys then, right? So the next one we had red, red, white, red. This is red, gray, white, gray. So that's sure, that's fine. Or do we want to make the arms red? Do we want to make the arms red and then just yeah, just have some stripage going on in the arms maybe? I think I like that a little better. See, now we're veering right off the path. The away jerseys are going to stay basically identical. I think that looks a little, little smarter. <laughs> and then this one was white, red, white. So yeah, white, gray, white would be the way we'd like it. So now let's go to the logo. Let's see how that looks. I don't think that looks too bad with that brown in there. It's like a yellowy brown or an orangey brown. But I honestly don't think it looks that bad. I had the... I had it as gray going down the shaft of the axe, right? And they were like, yeah, I don't know about that. So we ended up changing it. But I, I actually don't think that looks too bad at all. And I think it's going to look really sharp on the aways. So we uh, obviously got to take our logo, put it on both shoulders. Fonts. I'm kind of fine with the font. I actually stuck with the same font on this one because I do like the, the generic font. So what we're going to do is apply team colors. Oh, just gray, 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 and more gray, eh? <laughs> or white, I mean, sorry. So what am I looking at here? Yeah, this. You know what? I think I'll make these. I think I'll make these gray. I think that'd pop nicely. Yeah, that pops really good. All right, so let's go to the next one. That's the wrap around it. This one would be what? The back? Yeah. No. The back's already done. What am I looking at here? So that's the arm. I think that's pretty much good. And yeah, I think I think the name on the back, we leave that white so it would pop more. You'd be able to see it a little better. Now I'm wondering, do we want to go with the red pants? That's a lot of red, man. That's a lot of red. <laughs> Let's try it. Let's try it. Pants color. Instead of the I always did I always was a bigger fan of the uh black pants, 
but we'll see how the red goes once I do the socks and everything. Obviously, you got to put a logo on there. We'll get back, go to the socks. See, it's like, I don't know, is that too much red? I think that's like a darker white, though, eh? I'm not sure. So let's let's step back and let's look at this now. Is that too much? I don't think that's too much red. I think that actually looks kind of sharp. Yeah. No, I don't mind that at all. I think that's like a pretty nice jersey, man. <laughs> I dig it. I like it. I like it. Uh, skater equipment. So for the helmets, I think, again, we're going to go red. Just the one, just the one zone though. And I think that's a different red. So I think we got to go with this gloves. They're probably going to be pretty heavy on the red. Too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh man. You know what? For this? Yeah. Let's throw a little gray in here. Let's just, we don't need to like up the gray too much. We'll just throw a little bit of gray in there. So it's not so red. Uh, what else do we got? Yeah. This little accent here and throw a little more gray into the glove. Not too much, but a little bit kind of thing. So what else we got? No, not that one. Maybe this one. We'll gonna throw a little gray in here. It's already got quite a bit of white, quite a bit of red. <laughs> oh, man. All right, all right, all right. Helmet red. No, I like that. That's that's a nice jersey right there. I think it is a big improvement on the, the first one we had. All right, so there you go. There's our, there's our home jersey. We'll see one of them anyway. Once we actually get through the expansion draft and everything, we will get a little bit of... Uh, I'll, I'll just jump into like a preseason game to get a thumbnail. We can use it for the uh, first episode. Maybe I'll jump into like a home game and we can use the home jerseys. So let's go with the aways and let's do this again. Jersey style, 78, Jeez and Crow. All right, so now it's time to toss the logo on this bad actor. We'll get our primary logo. Yeah, see that pops super nice on the uh, on the away jerseys. A little better than it does on the home jerseys. This is just going to be for year one, you know? And then in year two, we're going to grab, like, you know, we're, we're going to have our uh, alternate and stuff. It's like for for year one, I'm not, like, worried about that. You know what I mean? Okay, so we're going to do red. And then the accents for it, I think, will make gray just to darken it up a little bit. Yeah, see, that pops a lot better. But I like that red lettering. For this one's red, this one. Oops, nope, wrong one, wrong one, wrong one. Is that my little wrap around there? What is this? What am I looking at? Was it like something on the helmet? Oh, no, it's the writing. Okay, okay. So I think it's this. This is the one I'm looking for. Okay, so this will make gray. Yeah, see, that pops a whole lot better. All right, so now for the pants. Yet again, pants color, we are going to go for the red. It's a lot of red. It's pretty aggressive. <laughs> <laughs> it's an aggressive amount of red. Oh, man. Yep, pants logo. And I know somebody said to, um, for the skater equipment, it's an away jersey. Shouldn't it be a white helmet? And I was like, hmm, maybe, I guess. Sock style four. Go apply team colors. It'll be white, red, and gray. Do I like that? Or did I want to switch that to gray and then red? I think I, I think I switch it to gray and red, right? Like I said, I took everybody's comments into account. I just, I can't do it with that. I can't do it with the white helmet. I just can't do it with the white helmet, man. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I know you can't see the lettering on the, you can't see the number on the helmet now. So I'm going to have to like, yeah, I like that just an, a whole awful lot. <laughs> We're going to dive into that. We're going to get through that expansion draft here. So that's all we got, man. The arena, I'll, I'll fix up the arena. Don't worry. And we'll, we'll get into this because this is the Jersey creation is taking a long time here, but I don't think I need to change much. The win, the outro. What do we want here? Team salute, the hammer smash, tunnel of Selly, board smash, chain reaction, bowling, ride them, limbo. Every, oh, Carolina. <laughs> oh, Carolina. Let's stick with the team salute, man. We ain't a bunch of jerks around here. <laughs> uh, I do like this, though, like the intro presentation and everything that they put in there. You can have props like the giant, you know, the giant head and everything. Uh, you got like your stanchion effects, signature effects, you know, like your fire and your scoreboard, the light effects, the on-ice projections. 
We got like Firestorm and everything. You got your Canadian national anthem and everything. So it is pretty cool. Like it's pretty, there is like a lot more options for like customization for like when you score a goal, is there like a spotlight on the player that scored and everything? It's like, there is a, there is a lot more to it. Let's go. So let's pick, who are we again? Quebec City. That's right. Now I got to go find us. There we go. The Quebec City combatants. Hey, look at the owner personality. Didn't change at all. <laughs> oh, man. That's terrible. Oh, well. Uh, I'm going to customize the AHL team really quick. And we are going to move them from Burnaby. We're going to leave them as the aces because who cares? But I just want to move like the actual team. I want to move the city to somewhere in Quebec. Well, they don't have the city that I wanted, so you know what? We're gonna put we'll put them in Montreal, in the Montreal Aces. There you go. That's all I wanted to do. I don't actually care. <laughs> I just didn't want I just didn't want the AHL affiliate to literally be on the other side of the country, like as far away as humanly possible. Oh my goodness! All right, so let's do it. Division realignment. So Quebec City. Um, I guess that would put us in the Atlantic. Because, I mean, Montreal's in the Atlantic, so you figure Quebec City would be in the Atlantic as well, right? Like, we wouldn't be in the metro because we wouldn't be far enough over, right? So I'm just going to throw it out there and say we're in the Atlantic division, which is, oh, so much fun. Although that metro is pretty grody. All right, so what do we want? Owner mode on. Auto owner mode. Expansion draft exemption for Seattle. Yes. Yeah, we can go with that. CPU trades. Yeah, player morale off. Jesus. Uh, fog of war off. Head coach headed lines. GM firing. We're going to turn that off, buddy. We're going we're gonna to turn that right off. But yeah, we're going to play with the salary cap on. We're going to play with morale off. We won't add a contract year. So if there are people expiring, maybe they don't want to stay with us. You know, that's a risk you got to take. All right. So let's play Continue. I'm just going to say start career, and then afterwards, like for the next episode, before we actually jump into anything, I'll go through and I'll do all the sliders and everything, because this video is going to be long enough already. So let's start. Keep salary cap on. Quebec City combatants. All right, so here we go. We're at our main menu. I mean, we don't have anybody on the team yet, but... Uh... NHL expansion draft. Well, I figured I'd take a moment to welcome you to the Quebec City Combatants franchise. You have your plate full with the upcoming expansion draft, but I'll touch base again in a few days before the draft itself after I get a sense of who the other teams are going to make available. All right. Maximum salary cap, 82.5, baby. Minimum is 61. We got to remember that. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So... It's like, we will still go advance to expansion draft. I'm pretty sure they're going to show us the draft lottery now. And we ended up fourth. Yuck. All right. You know what? I am going to go view draft class <laughs> to see who we got at four. Datsuk. Alexander Datsuk. Medium top six sniper. Ugh. This guy, though. Look at this. Rohan or Rowan. Would you say Rowan or Rohan? I said probably Rowan, right? Medium elite center grinder. <laughs> Cam Calder. I wonder what trophy he's going to go for. Oh, man. NHL ready. Good leader. And Marcus Bure, who has gem under his name. Offensive playmaker. You see, he's a playmaker. Yeah, he's, a, he's definitely a playmaker. But the guy that they're thinking we're going for is this Datsuk fella. Pro release, offensive instincts, foot speed. Two years out. Beauty backhand and wheels. So who else do we got? We got this Tristan Dubinsky. Power forward. I like that. Well, he could be. Puck protection, hard wrist shot. Pro. He probably is. But he's three years out. My goodness. Uh, Tom Thomas Abeltshauser. I think that's how you say it. I'm not sure at all. Even remotely confident. So I wonder if we could move up. I wonder if we could move up. Maybe go for this, uh, this Cam Calder fella. Seeing I always, oh, yeah, for sure. He could be like the next big deal. I'm, I'm, you know what? I think I'm going to try and like move up and get pick number two. I think that's what I'm going to do. So we're going to have to like get some folks. <laughs> we're going to have to get some folks at this expansion draft. Some people that have got like some serious value and we're going to have to trade away that number four pick plus another asset and try and move up to two. And I think, what was it? Seattle got number two? Something like that? I don't know. Begin expansion draft. Let's build a team. 
Uh, welcome to the expansion draft. As the expansion team, you will have to select one player from every NHL team for a total of 30 players. You must draft a minimum 14 forwards, nine defensemen, and three goalies. Making a pick. I know how to do that. Options panel. I know those. All right, here we go. So let's take a peek. Whoa, John Klingberg, 86 overall. He's an offensive D-man, I believe. Yes, he is. He's not bad defensively, though, but he doesn't fit. That's the thing. It's got to be someone who fits, man. Another offensive defenseman. Okay. Dmitry Kulikov, he's defensive, right? Yeah, he's probably going to fit everywhere. Top four. Jesus. So what is he? 81 overall. He has top four potential, but he's only 81. He's decent, though, you know? He played 80 games. He was plus 23. And it's like, defensively, he's great. I don't know. He's someone to think about. He's someone, like, I could think about maybe putting him in as, like, the number two left D kind of thing. And then it's like, you know, we can always scratch it and come back to it afterwards if we want to. What about Frankie V? He's actually got con he actually has term, right? Three years. So that'd go down to two. Two way forward. Fits top six. <laughs> oh, the options are so great. What about Sam Carrick? He's 30. He's a two way forward, but he fits line two. Don't like it. Don't like it. Don't like it. Do they have any like good young folks that are just not quite there yet? We got all of you a levy. <laughs> oh man, 24. Uh, so who's this? Glenn Godden. One year left at 765. And then a one year extension for the same amount. But no, I don't think I'm going to take him. Um, I'm thinking about taking Dmitry Kulikov, making him that number two left D. Let's see what they got for uh, goaltenders. We got Anthony Stolarz, who we could use as a backup. We would have to sign him, but he could be a really good backup goaltender. Hmm. And he's expiring. It'll be interesting to see what he wants. If he played 28 games, he had decent numbers. I feel like we're taking way too long here. But I'm still kind of stuck on Kulikov. I'd have to re-sign him. And he's 31. Stolarz is 28. I think I'm going with Stolarz, man. I think that's our backup goalie right there. Yeah, with our first pick, we chose a goaltender. This is going to be a long episode. We got Ghost. What's up, Ghost? Another offensive D-man. Fitz pairing one. Hey. You know what? I think I'm taking him. Ghost, number one lefty. He's, he's 85 overall, but you're not going to find much better than that in an expansion draft anyway. <laughs> All right. Lock it in. All right, moving on. Boston Bruins. David Krejci, but he's very old. Ooh, Brandon Carlo, 6'5", 227, right D. He's only 25? Wow, and he's low top four. What's up with that, man? He's not overly fast, and he's really ginormous, but physically he's unreal, right? And he doesn't fit. He's got term and everything. God damn. We got Matt Grizzlick, another left defenseman. Offensive D-man. Nope. Ooh, Pavel Zaka. That's an interesting one. High top six forward. He's 83. I'd put him in the top six, man. But he doesn't fit. Okay. Jake the Snake, baby. 25 goal scorer. 42 points last year in 77 games. Not too goddamn bad. Does he fit anywhere? No! <laughs> uh, Mike Riley. Another left D, two-way defender, fits pairing one, no. Derek Forbort, defensive defenseman, fits all the power play lines. We got 32-year-old Craig Smith. He fits line three. That could be our third line right winger. Hmm. It's just very... <laughs> I'm not overly thrilled about the fact that I do like Trent Frederick. That, like, no one seems to fit anywhere here. Connor Clifton, right D. Two-way, doesn't fit. Jeez, what kind of team are we going to build here, man? I don't know about him. I think it's going to be Craig Smith. He's an older guy, you know, but it's like he's got good speed. He's 87 speed, could be a seriously good uh, third-line option on the right wing. Um, you know, he's got decent puck control, decent discipline, good durability. He's relatively tough. He could be a good penalty killer for us too, you know. You just got to re-sign him. So I think I'll go with Craig Smith, third line right wing. Lock it in. Now on to the Buffalo Sabres. Kyle Lock Poso. <laughs> oh, sign me up. What do we got? Kale Clegg, two-way defender, doesn't fit anywhere. Riley Shan, fourth liner, fits line two. Yeah, it's not going to happen. Vinny Hinney, baby, two-way forward, fits line two. Not going to happen. Oh, Big Z, Zemgis Gergensen's could be a good depth option. 
Fitz line four in the penalty kill. That's a tough one to pay. I don't really want to pay a fourth liner like more than two million though. Hmm. I don't know. What about this Jacob Bryson? He's good and he's good and young. He doesn't fit anywhere. What do they have for tendies? Oh baby, UPL. UPL's available. <laughs> This is the dumbest game I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah, I guess I'm going with UPL. Okay. <laughs> He'll be our third goalie. Or maybe I'll use him to trade up. Because that's baloney. Maybe I'll use UPL to trade up for that number two pick. Because he just has so much potential. You know? He'll have he'll have some value. All right, moving on to Calgary. Calgary Flames. Ooh, Mackenzie Weger. Why is he a left D but he shoots right? Come on, man. Oh, you imagine, though, if he fit, like, the number one pick. God! <laughs> oh, another left D, Noah Hannafin. Penalty kill. Michael Backlund, that's an interesting one. We are going to need some cap, you know. He's 83. He could be, I know he's he's getting up there. And as soon as this is done, he's in the last year of his contract, right? So it's like Michael Backlund could be a decent, like, number two center option. Ooh, they expose Shillington? I doubt it. He doesn't fit. Blake Coleman. He makes a lot of money. Two-way forward. Fits line four in the penalty kill. I am not paying a fourth liner $5 million a year. Then we got Nikita Zadorov. Monstrous defenseman. Plays left or right. Fits top four. Oh, the only defenseman we have is Ghost. Man. I'm kind of thinking about going for Mikhail Backlund. Or Michael Backlund. I don't know. Whichever one you want to say. Good penalty killer. Could be a decent second line center for us. We're going to be a bad team right off the gate, right? Because we're like probably tanking year one to get a really good draft pick. Maybe we'll get Connor Bedard. Maybe we'll do him right. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm going to go with Backlund. All right, moving on to the Carolina Hurricanes. Like I said, I know this is taking forever, but get over it. You'll live. We got Patches. Good old fashioned 33 year old sniper. Doesn't fit. Burnsy, I don't want. Ethan Bear, very interesting option. Good defensively. Doesn't fit. <laughs> Jake Gardner, do we want to give him a shot? <laughs> he fits pairing three. <laughs> Calvin DeHaan, that could be an interesting option if he freaking fits somewhere else, man. So what was it? Yeah, he just fits pairing three, eh? Okay, Burnsy, where do you fit? Offensive D. Okay, he doesn't fit anywhere, anybody. Anyway. Jesper Fast, third line guy, sniper, doesn't fit. Ooh, Dylan Coughlin. That's an interesting one. High top four potential. Oh, my God. Martin Hook. What about Dezingle? Come on. Give the guy a chance. <laughs> to wave forward. Nah, man. Doesn't seem like they have a ton. What do they have for tendies? Ooh, anti-ranta. What do you think? Take the old guy for a year? <laughs> Use anti Ranta as our starter. Um, my goodness, and he's solid too, right? We got Ghost. He fits top four. I could use Calvin DeHaan as a top four defenseman. I think I'll. You know what? He's thirty one. You sign him to a short term deal. Let's just go with it. All right. So what's going to be available from Shytown? Town? Maxi Pad Domi. There you go. Second line center slash left winger. Oh, and he doesn't fit. Andreas Athanasiu, double A, baby. He's another one. Sniper, and he's quick. He's super fast. Damn, Connor Murphy, right D. Defensive defenseman, fits top four. He's just not good enough, you know? We got Jack Johnson, but he's getting up there. Caleb Jones. Hey, that's a fun one. I like Caleb Jones. Damn it. <laughs> oh, Riley Stillman. Okay, defensive defenseman, first top four. Colin Blackwell. He's another one. Isn't he, like, pretty darn fast? Well, he's very small, though. Fits line four. He's a two-way forward. That could be, yeah, 1.2. I'm fine with that. Let's see what else they got. Jujar Kara, I like a lot. I think we're going to go with Colin Blackwell. Probably. Dude, they still have Dylan Sakura. They just, like, don't play him. What do they have for tendies? Stay lock. Yeah, that's not going to happen. All right, we're going to go Colin Blackwell. Fourth line center. Moving on to the Colorado Avalanche, where Sammy Boy Gerard. Another offensive D-man, and he fits friggin' pairing one. Manson, right D. Defensive defenseman, fits top four. You know what? I think you take Josh Manson. So who do we got? We got Calvin DeHaan. So Josh Manson, uh, 4.5. I think he's your number one right D. 
for right now. You know, we could juggle some people around, but I think for right now, Josh Manson's our number one right defense. Like I said, this is a bad team. We're tanking. <laughs> We're tanking for prospects. So lock it in. Josh Manson for the next three years at 4.5. Let's go. Columbus Blue Jackets. They have Gus Nyquist available. He could be a second line sniper. Maybe a hey, fits line two. There you go. What do we got on line two now? We got Michael Backlund. Have Gus Nyquist. He's expiring. He had a decent season. What about Gavrikov? Oh, he's another... Di- oh, he's a two-way guy. Okay. Lefty on the penalty kill. What about Jake Bean? Another lefty. Offensive defenseman. Doesn't fit anywhere. That's par for the course, right? Eric Goodbranson. Third overall pick. Doesn't fit anywhere. Sean Corrali. Eric Robinson. Two-way forward. Fits line one. That's not going to happen. Emil Bemstrom. <laughs> Sniper. Doesn't fit anywhere. Bayreuther. Hmm... That's the thing. It's like if a team has like no one that I want, I would go for someone like Trey Fix Wolanski. You know what I mean? Someone with top nine potential. He's only 23. You know, someone who could potentially grow, but I, he, he has low top nine and he was a seventh round pick. That means the likelihood of him actually making the NHL are pretty low. I like Gus Nyquist. What else do they got? They got Eunice Corpusallo. But we've already got Anthony Stolarz that we're going to use as a backup who is better than Corpus Allo. So I'm actually thinking about taking Gus Nyquist. He's expiring, but he fits line two. I could sign him again, sign him to a short term deal. You know what I mean? Right or left wing, shoots left. I feel like I'd maybe put him on the right, but that means I need a playmaker for line two because we got Michael Backlund as our second line center. So Gus Nyquist is going to be a second line winger. There you go. Moving on to the Dallas Stars. Who did they leave uh, exposed? Colin Miller, who is a two-way defender. Fitz pairing one. That doesn't work for me. Uh, Mason Marchman. There you go. 27-year-old Mason Marchman. Power forward. He fits line two. Damn it. That would not work. Oh, I'd love to have Mason Mason Marchman, but it just wouldn't work. Willie Butcher. Left D. Two-way. Doesn't fit anywhere. We also have Yanni Hockenpah. Defensive defenseman just fits the penalty kill. Tom Halle. We got as a two-way defender. Fits oh, the penalty kill. God damn. Uh, what do they got in net? Scott Wedgwood. And Anton Hudobin. No, they got nothing I want. Uh, what about Radic Fox? He's overpaid. Fits line two. That's not going to work for me. And Luke Glenn Denning. Two-way forward. Fits line three. We have no third line center. You know what? Let's see what they got for youngsters here. What about Nick Camano? What is he? He's a grinder. I love my grinders, but they just don't really make it. Riley Damiani. He's a playmaker. Okay. Taken in the fifth round in 2018. I like him. So you know what? Let's get him for the AHL. There you go. Detroit. See what they got. Oh, Tyler Bertuzzi. That is... Line four, okay. <laughs> Robbie Fabry is a sniper, fits nowhere. Dominic Kubalik, baby. Two-way forward, fits line two. Doesn't work for me. I need a playmaker. Like, I legitimately need a playmaker. Uh, ben Sherratt fits everywhere. Three years at four and three quarters, though. And he's a big boy. He's so slow, physically great, defensively decent. He's got that top six role. He's very overpaid. I'll think about him for the third pairing, but I really don't want to pay a third pairing guy that much money, right? I'd actually rather take a look at Pissick. Hey, baby. Mark Pissick, right or left? I'd probably put him on the right. Right D, hard to find. <laughs> Mark Pissick. Oh, man. Yeah, you know what? Yeah, let's do it. Mark Pissick. Th- well, I don't know. Only Mata is so much younger. <laughs> he just doesn't fit down there. See what else they got. Robert Hag, 27 years old defensive defenseman, just fits the penalty kill. What about Sonny? Where do you fit? Two-way guy, fits line two, doesn't work for me. Michael Rasmussen, sniper, no. Uh, Gustav Lindstrom, right D, defensive defenseman, fits in the power play. That, like, that's so dumb. What about Jordan Osterley? Another defensive defenseman, we don't know where he fits. Damn, I think we're taking Mark Pesic. I think that's who we're taking, unless Alex Nedeljkovic. Do we want to try and bring him back? 
Bring him back to glory. Use Ned as our starter. <laughs> oh my god. You know what? Uh I'll come back to Detroit. I gotta remember that. Come back to Detroit afterwards. Clef bomb. God, they gotta take him out of this game, man. He's never gonna play again. We got Ryan Murray. Two-way fits pairing three. Very cheap. I'm thinking about him. Ryan Murray is is kind of uh a good looking option. Not not CC. I do like Warren Fogel. Doesn't fit anywhere. Brett Kulak. Two-way defender. Fits pairing three. He's 28. 2.5 for three years. Uh, I just feel like Ryan Murray is going to want more than like Brett Kulak. Who has decent... He's got decent speed. Like he's a decent defenseman. And he's a third pairing guy. I think you take... I think you take Brett Kulak if they have no goalies available. They got Stuart Skinner, but, you know. Yeah, so he's a left D. Third pairing left D. Brett Kulak. All right, you know what? We're going to go back to Detroit then. And I am not going to take Mark Pizek. I'm taking Ned. There's our starter. Alex Nedeljkovic, baby. All right, moving on to the Florida Panthers. Where they got Brandon Montour, right, D-Man? Where do you fit? Goddamn nowhere. Colin White, another interesting option. Two-way forward, fits line two. Nick Cousins, playmaker, fits line two. It's not ideal. <laughs> but I could use Nick Cousins as a second-line left winger, even though he's only 80 overall. I don't like it. Rudolph's Balsers doesn't fit anywhere in this team. Big ol' Radko, Chris Tierney. Michael Delzato, Ryan Lomberg, man, the Lamborghini. Two-way forward, fits line two. Oh, uh, Alexi Hepaniemi, another playmaker that doesn't fit anywhere. Could be a decent prospect. One of those guys, you, you send him down to uh, the AHL just for one year. What are they giving up? Alex Lyon. Okay, nothing I want. I really like Montour, man. I really would have wanted him. Like, and he's a right D. You throw him beside uh, Calvin DeHaan, I think that works great. I might just do it anyway. <laughs> I think I might just take him anyway because I really like uh, I really like Brandon Montour. Second pairing, right D. <laughs> All righty, so the Los Angeles Kings are next. Alex Ayafalo is a two-way forward, fits line four. That's just criminal. Vicky Arvidsson is a sniper that fits nowhere. Ooh, quote the Raven, Trevor Moore. What do we got? Playmaker? Urgh, I wish you fit on the second line, man. I totally use you there. Blake Lazat doesn't fit anywhere either. Sean Walker fits pairing one. Uh, you know what? This is another one. I, I like Trevor Moore quite a bit. I need the playmakers, you know? Blake Lazat's also a playmaker, and he's real young. He's very small, though. Trevor Moore, he's exact top six. So if he has a good year, he's going to grow. You know what I mean? He's a little bigger. I like that. You know what? I'm just going to go with it. Screw it. Second line. Second line wing. Minnesota Wild are next. We got Marcus Foligno. 30 years old. He's 83 overall. Grind if it's line two. No. Uh, Alex Goligoski. Could be a top. No. Well, we've already got our top four defense is already taken care of. Freddie Goudreau. Two way forward. Fits line two. Nope. Jacob Middleton. What do we need? We need a right D. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Give me a right D. <laughs> what about Brandon Duhame? What are you? Fitz line four and all the penalty killing lines. We could take him for the fourth line. He's only 25. Could grow a little bit. They also have Kalen Addison. That's a offensive D-man. Prospect. Could grow good. You know, might not grow at all. Connor DeWar, playmaker. Good speed. Good Attributes, really, just needs the awareness. He's 22 years old. Ah, oh, this is a tough one, man. It's like, do you take Kalen Addison? He was a, what, a second round pick? Do you take Dewar? Do you take Duhame? Brandon Duhame? Fitz line four, right wing? <laughs> Put him beside Colin Blackwell? I think I'll go with Brandon Duhame. All right, Montreal. We're stealing from... <laughs> our neighbors we got jonathan drew and baby do we want to give him another shot he doesn't fit we got mike hoffman 
Sniper doesn't fit anywhere. Sean Monahan. Okay, what was he again? Two way forward. No, no, no. Josh Anderson. Good old Andy. Big contract. Where do you fit on the penalty kill? That's about it. Jake Evans. Gotta love Jake Evans. He's only 26. Medium top six potential. You never know. Fits line one. I don't like that. We got. I, I think uh, from this one, you know what? I always like Nate Schnarr. I think we'll take him. Throw him in the AHL. What else do we got? Matias Ekholm. Two way. Top four. Damn. We already got that figured out though. We got Nino Neater Skeeter Eater. Fits nowhere. Uh, Alexander Carrier. He's a right defenseman. High top four potential fits on number one. Not going to happen. Tanner Janot, grinder, fits top six. I don't like that at all, even a little bit. Colton Sissons, two-way forward, fits line two. We got Jeremy Lozon, fits top four. Zach Sanford, Mark Jankowski. Oh, Borokop. There you go, Borokop. No, no, we're not taking him. What do they got in net? Kevin Lankinen, Connor Ingram. High starter. You know what? There's your AHL starting goalie. Could potentially jump up to the NHL the next following season. Let's go for Ingram. There you go. Okay, New Jersey Devils. They got Damon Severson. Two-way defender. Doesn't fit anywhere. Ryan Graves. Eric Howla. It's an interesting one. Center playmaker. Fits nowhere. Andreas Janssen, who just got uh, waved. <laughs> I ain't putting you on the top line, though, buddy. I can tell you that much. Uh, Michael McLeod, good young guy, two-way forward, fits line four, and the power play. That's interesting, but very, very fast, fast player. Only 24, great potential. I think you go with Michael McLeod. Where do you put him, though? He fits the fourth line. Um, I guess we'll put him at, like, fourth line left wing, and we'll have to see when the season starts. Maybe he does fit on the third line. You never, you never truly know until you actually get there. So you know what? We'll mark him down fourth line wing. All right, we're getting through her now, baby. Anthony Beauvillier, left wing, two-way forward, fits line two. Zach Parisi, I'm not interested in all these fossils. <laughs> uh, Sebastian Ajo is a left defenseman. We got Scott Mayfield. He's a right defenseman. Again, he'll be, yeah, defensive defenseman. We can't go with that. Uh, Paul Ledoux. Two-way defender. Says he doesn't fit anywhere. Uh, Dennis Chalowski is a 24-year-old two-way defender. Uh, I like his uh, I like his potential. You know? We got Otto Koivula. I like him, but I feel like you kind of got to go with Dennis Chalowski. Like, he might not play this year, but he might, you know? Ryan Lindgren. Defensive defenseman. Fits everywhere. It's such a shame. Uh, who else we got? Barclay Goudreau signed to that monstrous contract. He fits in the bottom six. What is he? Left wing slash center. I say you get Barclay Goudreau and make him your third line left winger. <laughs> 3.6 for four years. It's not bad. We need to take the cap hit, but we also have Philip Heedle. Two way forward. Fits line three power play and penalty kill. Center slash left wing. He does, he's not great. He's not great on the faceoff, but he's 22. He's got all the potential in the world. Philip Heedle, I think you're our third line left winger. Why did I do that? I hit the wrong button. Philip Heedle. All right, now let's see what the Senators are giving up. Oh, Matthew Joseph. That's a fun one. Uh, right wing slash left wing. Fits line four. Damn. Hmm. Nick Holden. Fits top four. Hamannick could use him as our... No, we can't. Dylan Gambrell. It's an interesting one. What else do you got? These guys should have just a plethora of <laughs> talent. Jakob Larson, 25 years old with top four potential, but he's like 75 overall. Wow. What do they got in net? Cam Talbot and Magnus Hellberg. He's, wow, they have 84 overall and he's a backup. That's wild. All right, you know what? Um, really like Matthew Joseph. I think this might be one of those, you know, we'll figure out when we get there kind of things. Um, right now, I'm going to pen him in for the third line because I do really like Matthew Joseph. I think I'm going to pen him in on the third line. And now all we're missing is a third-pairing right defenseman and our entire top line. 
<laughs> Cammy Atkinson, Snipe, Fitz Nowhere, Jiver, no, Lawton, no, Busta, no. <laughs> Justin Braun is a right defenseman. Yes, again, though, he is a defensive defenseman. We don't need that. Mo Frost, good and young. He doesn't fit anywhere. Damn. Zach McEwen, what else do we got? Isaac Ratcliffe, 6'6", 200 pounds, 75 overall. Uh, what is he? Power forward. He could grow into something good for us, man. I think you go with Ratcliffe and throw him in the minors. We'll go to Pittsburgh. We got Jeff Carter, the center, sniper, fits nowhere. Dumoulin, we got Zucker. See, that's the thing. At this point, we're we're looking for right de defensive defenseman. The only thing we're looking for is a third pairing right D man. You know what I mean? Teddy Blugs. Teddy Blugs. I think he's rated a little low. Uh, what about Chad Ruedel? What is he? Two way defender. Fits on the penalty kill. He's thirty two years old, man. Yikes. And Ruda was. A defensive defenseman, I believe. What do they have in net? Tristan Jari, medium elite. Or exact elite, sorry. Well, crap. <laughs> uh, he's expiring, though, and he's going to want a big payday. He's going to want to get fat paid, baby. You know what? I said we're going with Ned. We're going to go with Ned. Uh, I think I'm just going to take like a prospect or something. What do we got? Alex Nylander. <laughs> you know what? I like Alex Nylander. It's so dumb that he's rated 75 overall. Let's give the kid a chance, man. Put him on like the top line in the AHL. So what else, what else do we got? Nick Bonino. There's like nothing of value anymore. We got Yona, or Jonah Gadjevich. Sorry. 23-year-old power forward. I'm not like he's not going to play in the NHL. But there's a decent prospect. Again, you throw him in the minors. Where else are we? St. Louis. Ryan O'Reilly, baby. First line forward, two-way forward, fits line two. Gosh darn. What about Vlade? As if he would be available. Sniper fits nowhere. Ryan O'Reilly says he fits line two. Could he potentially fit line one? Could we have Ryan O'Reilly as our number one center? Or better yet, Vladimir Tarasenko as our number one right winger? I like it. I think I'm going to go with Tarasenko. And he's just, I, even I mean, he might not fit so well. The X Factors will definitely help with that. I think we're going Vladi. All right, let's see what Tampa Bay's getting rid of today. Alex Kalorn, there's a left winger. Two way forward, fits line one and the penalty kill. So that means I would need like a playmaking center. I think I'm going to go with Kalorn and put him on that. Uh... Ooh, hold on a minute. Hayden Flurry. Medium elite potential. Knife, it's pairing one. <laughs> oh, well. Alex Kalorn, number one left wing. <laughs> All right, we're going to Tarana. We got Geo. It's still 84 overall. Wow, that's wild. Uh, what else do we got? We got Alex Kerfoot. Fits line two. We got Calais Yarncroak. Fits top six. Timothy Lilligren. Two-way defender. Damn it. Doesn't fit anywhere. And he's a right D. Screw it. I'm taking him. He's my third line freaking. <laughs> We're going to have a third line defensive pairing of Brett Kulak and Timothy Lilligren. <laughs> All right. Let's go to Vancouver and see if they've got anything of value. It does not look like they do. I do like my Curtis Lazar, though. Curtis Lazar is fantastic. He's not going to fit where I need him to, though. Noah Juleson. 25 years old, defensive defenseman, prospect, but he's more of a project now. What else we got? Lucas Yasek, he's 24. Top nine playmaker, very fast, but he's 24. He would need to make the NHL in like one year or he's never going to make it. What are they giving away for a goalie? Let's go like Michael DiPietro. He could be our... Mm, we already have a minor league starting goaltender. I was really hoping he was going to have, like, minor backup. Um, who was I thinking? Yeah, Lucas Yasik. I think we're going to go with him. VGK, baby. We're stealing from you. What do we got? Riley Smith. Filthy Phil, baby. Filthy Phil Kessel. Doesn't fit anywhere. I'm not surprised at all. Keegan Colasar. Grinder. Fits the bottom six. He could be our spare forward. There you go. Keegan Colasar. Spare forward. What we need is a number one center, and it needs to be a playmaker. So we have Tarasenko, Kalorn, and then 
I guess in free agency, we're going to have to find someone. We got Connor Brown, who's fantastic. Damn, man. I already got that second line figured out, though. Manta, he's another one. Right wing slash left wing. He's a sniper now. He's not a power forward anymore. Wow. We got Lars Eller, Marcus Johansson, Eric Gustafson, Frankenstein monster. My goodness. Fairvari. Let's look at let's look at some uh, prospects here. We got Hank Borgstrom, two way forward. Brett Leeson. I love Brett Leeson. I don't know where he fits. Uh, Gabriel Carlson. What else do we got? Axel Janssen Fialbi. I need some I need some prospects here, man. I need something to put. There you go, Cody Clark. We need something to put in the AHL. All right, Washington. Oops. What do we? Oh, what did that say? Damn it. Okay, hold on. I got to go back and like pick him again. <laughs> so who was it again? Cody Clark. You must draft a defender next in order to have the minimum. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So I got to draft a D, man. Did they have any defensive prospects? Fairvari. Uh, Gabriel Carlson. You know what? That Fairvari guy, I don't know if he'll get into a ton of games. Martin Fairvari, high top six defensive guy. Fits pairing three. You know what? He might even replace Kulak. Because I like to have a spare forward and a spare defender, like, at all times. So, you know what? We'll go Fairvari. I think he might end up being that third-pairing lefty. Now we got the Winnipeg Jets. I think I have to pick another defenseman. <laughs> oh. All right, all right, all right. Uh, Kyle Capobianco. Sure, there's a good prospect defenseman. Finished draft. All right, so we got our team built. Now we got to go through the draft. Then we're going to have to go through free agency and then get through the off season. But there's some decent picks in there, man. I like this team. It's a weird team. But I think what I'm going to do, because it was super dumb that they had the Buffalo Sabres leaving uh, UPL open to be taken, which would never happen. Like, number one, Buffalo is going to protect UPL. What are they, like, you know, it just makes no sense. He is the future of the Buffalo Sabres gold, like, in net. He's the future there. My goodness. So that's dumb. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take him. I'm going to flip him with the number four pick and get the number two pick. How do you like me now? All right. We're, just, <laughs> we're done this. Vladdy, our number one guy, very quickly. I want to go to view contracts and see. Oh, they all want to come back. It's beautiful. Uh, but Tarasenko is the only one I'm really worried about. Uh, 8.3 for seven years. Why don't we just go right back down to what you make now? Seven and a half for seven years. The contract will age horribly, but I don't care. Ghost. I like Ghost. And look at this. 51 points. He was a minus 23, but 51 points. He's probably not even going to want that much. Yeah, three years. That's all he wants. Three-year deal. I could get, I could easily get him for 4.5 for three years. I like that just fine. Um, Kalorn and Gus, I think I'm going to, oh yeah, these guys are expiring like now. Yeah. Okay. Uh, three, another one, three years. We'll give them like four and three quarters so that, yeah, I forgot. This is for like this year, this upcoming year. <laughs> so we got Gus Nyquist. Yeah, sure. Three years. I could get him for four. There you go. Uh, I'd rather pay. I'd rather get Gus for like two years. So I'd probably need to give them like four and a quarter for two years because, yeah, once they like 32, 33, 34, that's when they start to decline. Trevor Moore does not want to stick around. Philip Heedle does. Fairvari, what does he want? Three years, 2.1. Uh, you're young enough, and he's actually still an RFA at the end of that. Okay, so you know what? I will pay you two. Three years, two. You're only 22 years old. Same as Philip Heedle. What does Philip Heedle want? Four million. Uh, I think we're going to end up qualifying you. Who else wants to come back? Craig Smith. I don't know what he's old, man. Calvin DeHaan, Michael McLeod. Some of these guys, I think we're going to wait till the re-sign phase. Ooh, Ned doesn't want to come back. What would he want? One year, 5.6. He's an RFA. So like, he doesn't have a lot of... <laughs> there's, there's not a lot he can do. Uh, we are definitely going to need to get cap compliant. So I think I will offer 2.4 million for one year for Stolars. That's offering him like, what, 20% more than he wanted. He said he's not interested in, ext in an extension, but he'll, he'll think about it. You know what I mean? Oh man. 
So now we can simulate ahead. I'm not going to bother with the draft interviews because I know what I want to do already. Nobody is going to, no one's going to sign those contracts just yet. But we are at the NHL entry draft. All right, so let's jump into the NHL entry draft where we are going to try to get Seattle's number two pick so we can take Cam Calder, a good old-fashioned 18-year-old elite sniper who is similar to Timu Solani. Man, that would be fantastic as our first ever pick in this franchise mode. So trade for pick. What I'm going to give them... I'm thinking, oh my God, I understand. I understand. Stop this now, immediately. Uh, what? Jesus! So many prompts. Here we go. So uh, I am going to trade them the number four pick, which they do want. That's fantastic. And I was thinking, let's why don't, why don't we give them UPL? Let's see if that'll get it done. Look at this. Like The value's really pretty good in favor of Seattle, and goaltending is kind of a problem for them. So let's see if they'll do it. No, they won't do it. Okay, I'm going to have to add something else. I'm not going to give them any more goalies, but I would be willing to, you know what? I'll give them a second round pick next year. There you go. The fourth overall pick, a goaltending prospect, and a second next year for the second overall pick. Rejected. Wow. Oh, boy. Uh, No, I'm not going to give them, like, futures four years from now. <laughs> They would like Isaac Ratcliffe. I could give them him, another prospect. And see, I don't think they're doing it. I don't think they're going to do it, man. Instead of giving them, hmm, what if I gave them like a 2024 first round pick? Like, look at how lopsided this is. That way it's like, if we're going to tank this year, I don't, I'm not saying necessarily we're going to tank, but if we do poorly this year, we're going to get a really good draft pick. You know what I mean? But then the following year, we're going to have our foundation set. All's going to be well. So let's see if they'll do it this time. Still no. Wow. I don't know if we're getting them. I don't know if we're going to get them. Let's go. Ratcliffe, you're the deal breaker. Rejected. Wow. No, they're not going to do it. They're not going to do it. Damn. All right. So I want to go view draft class. I wanted to see what there was again. We could always go for that Marcus Burre kid, but... I don't think it's going to happen. I'm thinking Alexander Datsuk, who is a center sniper two years out, though. He does have some superstar abilities. Or you have, like, Tristan Dubinsky, but he's three years out, potentially. Abel's Hauser, we got Dmitry Leonov. Big left winger. Pro release. Two years out. He's got big tipper and bouncer. We know that he has those two. But he could potentially have Heat Seeker as well. So that Bure kid went first. He's already a second line right wing playmaker. Look at his attributes, dude. This guy's fantastic. Oh, man. I think we're sticking with our pick. What was this guy? 79 overall, medium elite, center sniper, Cam Calder. Fantastic. Oh, God. He's <laughs> so much goodness. And what was this guy? The elite grinder. Oh, man. Physically, he's unreal. It's very... Oh, what just happened? Okay, yeah. I thought I just pressed the wrong button for a second. I'm like, oh, no. Uh, I think we are going to go for Alexander Datsuk. It's going to be a year or two before we get him. But I think we're going to go for him. You know what? Let's just take him. Here we go. 68 overall, medium top six, center sniper. Uh, pretty good shooter. That uh, the discipline's not really where you want it to be. I mean, the durability's not really where you want it to be, but... I think in just a couple of short years, he's, he's going to be something special. We didn't get exactly what we wanted, but you know what? It's okay. We got Kieran Gronick. Who's this guy? Three years out. Nothing special about him. Quincy Ling, right defenseman. Three years out, low top six. Could be low top four. You never know. Brendan Carter. Another one. Right D, six foot three, 197. No weakness. Could be two years out. Who else do we got here? Nikolai Semenov. Uh, I'd so like, I doubt he's elite. But a big part of me wants to take a goaltender. Come on, be something special, baby. A goalie in the early second round? Usually a safe pick. Medium elite, baby. 
There you go. Nikolai Semenov, six foot two, 180 pound, medium elite goaltender. There's the future right there. The Quebec City Combatants. <sighs> okay. Pick 69. Let's do this. What else do we got? Center Thorburn. Gail Thorburn. Puck protection. Three years out. Okay. So he's got to be like 64, 65 overall, maybe 63. Uh, I say we just go for him. Let's do it. Low bottom six. Center grinder. He's 62 overall. That's actually not that bad. I mean, the, bo the low bottom six is pretty bad. But, I mean, everything else about him is actually not that bad. So pick 102. Let's do it. Round four. Now we're just going for potential. We could have left D, Jonathan Dika. 18 years old, six foot, 190, good character, could have explosive stride, no weakness. I doubt he's medium elite. I'm going to pin him though. Brett Brochu, two years out. So he's probably never going to play. Okay. <laughs> All right. What else do we got? What about like the low elites? Oh, baby. There you go. 208. Stuart Paul, low elite, five years out. He's probably more like low top six. So we're gonna we're gonna watch list him. Let's see what else we got. Uh not really too much that's sticking out to me here. So, you know, I think we're gonna start getting our guys. I'm just gonna get Stuart Paul from USA hockey. We're picking him really early. Low top four. There you go. Low top four defensive defenseman. Next, we'll pick the uh the other guy we got watch listed. The guy we pinned, Dika. Jonathan Dika. Come on, baby. Be nice to me. Seventh D? That was mostly accurate. Come on. What a terrible pick that turned out. You have three bars. Three flipping bars. Max Graham. Uh, who else do we got? Dimitri Alexeev. Work ethic. That's what you want to see. Five years out, but he's got that work ethic. The first, uh, the first draft is usually a write-off anyway. It's usually awful. <laughs> it's like outside like the top three guys. Uh, Ruslan Gazizov. I like your name. It's just a nightmare, and I kind of like it. Let's go for it. Gazizov, low top nine. Hey, I'll take that. Seventh round pick, and he is the best pick we've had in four rounds. <laughs> it's all right. Like I said, the first draft is always a throwaway after the first round. So we got that Daksuk kid. We got Nikolai Semenov, who's an elite goaltending prospect, who I am very excited about. I cannot wait. We ended up just sticking with what we had. Now we're going to get to the re-sign phase where some of these guys should start signing. Like, Vladdy, I think he's going to sign. Okay, what do we got? 11 players are about to be RFAs. Like, Philip Hedl, Alex Nedeljkovic. Yeah. Anthony Stolarz. It was an easy decision. Yep, that's good. Gus Nyquist is back. Shane Gostisbehere is back. Vladdy Boy is back. Here we go. Alex Kalorn. Uh, Martin Fairvari. All these guys... All these guys re-signed with us. So I'm thinking a lot of it. Oh, man, I hate how they have to, like, show you all this stuff all the time. Let's go all expiring. Uh, Trevor Moore, I do want to keep. I do like Trevor Moore quite a bit. I know he's a third liner. I think he should be a second liner. It said he fits on line two, and I like him a whole awful lot. We got, like, Philip Heedle was making 2.3. What I'm going to end up doing is probably with a couple of these guys uh, is, is waiting until the last day of the re-sign phase and then you tender them a qualifying offer and then in a couple weeks or like a month into free agency then usually what they're asking for has gone down quite a bit but Trevor Moore I do want to get him taken care of three years 3.15 he's going to be a top six forward so you know what I would rather have him for like four years and I would be willing to pay him like 3.6 for four years uh, you know what? To make sure he signs, let's go three and three quarters for four years. It's Trevor Moore. I mean, the guy's awesome. Philip Heedle, he wants an extension. What was it again? Two years. And he, I could get him for two and a quarter for two years. He's too young. I want him longer. Honestly, I want Philip Heedle a lot longer than that. Um, I'd rather have him like six years. And wow, well, it's not really realistic though. Five years. That makes him a UFA as well. He should be happy about that. And I will offer him exactly what he wants. Calvin DeHaan, he's going to be a top four guy for me, but he is 31. So I'm going to offer him like 2.4 for two years. He should sign that. 
Craig Smith, yes, I'd like to keep him around. I'll offer him what he wants, but I only want him for one year. Michael McLeod, he's going to be more like a depth guy. I'll offer him a one-year deal, 1.2. Duhame, we'll just qualify. Gadjevich, we'll just qualify. Lucas Yasik will qualify. What else we got? Alex Nylander will... Oh, no, damn it. Alex Nylander will qualify. Isaac Ratcliffe, you almost got traded, but qualify. Damiani, qualify. Nate Schnarr, qualify. Actually, I I, I don't think we're really going to have to wait on anybody except for Alex Nedeljkovic. Connor Ingram wants to come back. Two-year one-way deal. Eesh, I don't like that. You're getting qualified, buddy. All right, so we're going to wait till the final day of the re-sign phase, and then we're just going to um, we're going to give Alex Nedeljkovic a, a qualifying offer. So here we go. Craig Smith is back. Calvin DeHaan is back. Trevor Moore is back. Michael McLeod doesn't know if he wants it. Philip Heedle, he's coming. Oh, yeah, baby. So you know what? I'm going to have to go back and try again. <laughs> Michael McLeod. I do want him, like, in the NHL. What if I got you for two years and I'll offer you like, I'll offer you what you want. Again, I'll offer you what you want. There you go. For two years, 1.9 mil. There you go. Hey, he's back. Good stuff. We also have to remember though, that we are going to need a number one center. So here we go. On the final day, Jonah Gadjevich, Nate Schnarr, uh, Riley Damiani, Alex Nylander, Lucas Yasik, they all re-signed. They all signed those qualifying offers, so they're all back for one more year. We got $18.4 million in cap space, but we need ourselves a goaltender. <laughs> uh, and we got Lucan and oh my goodness, we got UPL still. I forgot about that. Yeesh. So we're either going to have to move Stolars or we're going to have to move Lukanen. Or we could use them as a tandem, and Lukanen could be the. I don't want Lukanen though because we got this Seminov kid. I'm, I'm telling you, it says he's five years out, but by year three, he's going to be ready for the NHL. You know what I mean? And it's like, we got Ingram. Ingram's probably going to be coming up one of these days. Ah, uh, damn. I think I'm going to pay Ned for, you know, I, th- I think I'm going to give Ned like a relatively decent contract. I think I might move out Stolars then. And I think we might keep UPL for that last year. Um... Maybe qualify him and trade him then because I think Connor Ingram's probably going to be ready to come up. But I think Ned's going to be the guy probably for the next like four years or something while we're waiting, three or four years, while we're waiting for Semenov to like become what he should become. You know what I mean? Oh, man. I don't know. All right. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Advanced day. We'll go to free agency. Isaac Ratcliffe signs. We are also going to have to basically go through uh, free agency, put together like an AHL team that's at least somewhat respectable. <laughs> so let's see what they got. Day one, we got to see what they got. We need a center. Ryan O'Reilly. What did we need? Oh, we need a playmaker. Two way forward. Laugh. <laughs> I don't have nearly enough to get that done. Center, Ivan Barbashev. Oh, man, the overalls are getting real low here. Sharon Govich, ugh. You know what? We're going to go by overall and centers. So who do we got? Oh, man. We don't have a ton of options here. We could go the Ryan O'Reilly route. We, oh, you know what? We could go the Bobo route. He's a 30-goal scorer. He fits line two. He's got some X factors. He's not nearly as expensive as Ryan O'Reilly who's just an unbelievable center. And he fits line two. It's like, God, please tell me you fit line one, man. But I don't want this team to be too old. You know what I mean? I think I'd rather go. I know we're going to have two-way forward, two-way forward sniper, which might not work that well. But like I said, I think the X factors are probably going to help out with that. Uh, It's like, I don't want to go like David Krejci, right? He's 36. And Burgie's 36. I mean, he's unbelievable. He only fits line four. Ryan O'Reilly, unbelievable. But I just, I don't know. I just I just don't see it working. But with Bobo, like, I feel like we're in a better position. You know what I mean? 
He's really solid, good defensively, good physically. He can shoot. He can pass. He's he's good at everything. I think you go for Horvat. Five years. Five years, and I'll offer you six and a quarter. And then all we have to worry about is Ned. And I am, well, we're going to go back to all skaters. I'm going to go to two-way. And I'm going to build basically an AHL team. That gives us a lot of contracts. <laughs> All right, sim simulate ahead a couple of days. They want to give me a third and a fourth for Stolars, a fifth and a sixth. I was just talking about how I got to get rid of Stolars. So what if we, hmm, give me a third and a fourth. But yeah, but that's two years from now for a fifth and a sixth and Stolars. Hmm, I guess. Fifth and a sixth, a third and a fourth. Would I be able to maybe get, would I be able to get like a second for all of this stuff? Instead of a third and a fourth, could I take a second? I don't know. Let's see. Rejected, yeah. Damn. All right. I am tempted to still do it. What if I got rid of the sixth? Rejected. Okay, so the sixth is important to them. <laughs> All right. You know what? I'll do it. I'll do it. I just I just got done saying we need to get rid of Anthony Stolars because I didn't end up trading away UPL unless I traded UPL a fifth and a sixth for like a second round pick. No. You know what? We're going to move on from Stolarz. He's the older goaltender. UPL's got all this value and everything. It's like he's 23. We'll use him and Ned until the, the young kid comes up. Let's see if it still works. Yes. All right. Now, I have decided to accept your offer, but it's not a done deal just yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's an offer sheet. I know. I was extremely happy to accept your offer. Extremely happy. Extremely happy. Extremely happy. Extremely happy. Extremely happy. That's a tongue twister. Extremely happy, extremely happy. Ivan Lodnia, Thomas Novak, Tyler Madden. Oh, he went to Minnesota. What else we got? Josh Brook. He decided to go somewhere else. Nick Abrazizi. We got him. Zach Senishin. We got him. Valtteri Pustinen. We got him. Sammy Niku. Where? No, I'm not giving you Brandon Montour. It's not going to happen. Okay, you got it. Like Bobo, talk to me. Has been matched. Damn. All right. Hey, there you go. We got a number one center. Bo Horvat, baby. <laughs> All right. So what I'm going to do is simulate ahead in just a couple of weeks. We're going to go to like the end of July. What is this? Higgins for not to Han. No, 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 no. All the players I got, I basically want. Noel Gundler. I know. I know. But no, you're not getting Brandon Montour. We're going to get to basically the end of July. And then we're going to offer Ned Connor Ingram's back. Uh, then we're going to offer Ned a nice contract. I, I'm hoping that he will accept a contract for, you know, three years, four years, something like that. I think that'd be good to get him for like four years. Montour wants an extension. So I'd like to talk to him about an extension. That's perfect. Four years. And I will offer you $5 million. That's a lot of dollars. Timothy Lilligren, he's probably going to be in the top four and he wants an extension. What would he want? Two years, 3.9. And eh, maybe we'll wait on you. Maybe we'll, uh, we'll come back and talk to you after a little while. We'll see how it goes. All right, what do we got? Go to our RFAs. We got Alex Nedeljkovic. Four years. Okay. I could probably give you 4.1 for four years. You know what? We'll make it 4.15 just because it's more fun. Yeah, let's go. 26-year-old Alex Nedeljkovic. We got you locked down until you're 30. And then you're out. Offer contract. Let's go. I'm very happy that I was like, I'm going to sign him to like a four-year deal. And that's like exactly what he wanted. So advanced day, Ned's in. So what do we have for cap space? I'm not going to weaponize it just yet. We have $11.1 million in cap space. But I also do have a Brandon Montour uh, contract offer going through. We got 44 out of 50 contracts. I'm pretty happy with that. So I think we're going to basically... Just wait and see what Montour says. Easy decision to renew my contract with you. Beautiful. We're into August, so it's time for us to just simulate on ahead to the beginning 
of next season, I think it's pretty safe bet when you get to like the 14th of September. You're usually pretty good. Oh, what's this? Brandon Duhame. Oh, we still have an RFA. Okay, stop, stop, stop. Let's deal with it. Is he the only one? Oh, he is too. Okay. Brandon Duhame. Yeah, no, we're going to do one year. And I'm only going to offer you 900. <laughs> he might end up in the NHL. I'm not sure. And then, like I said, uh, then we're going to end this video. It's getting very long. We don't want this video to be too, too long. He should, uh, he should accept this pretty quickly. Oh, what do we got? Gundler and Drury for a third, a fourth, and Calvin DeHaan. They really want a lot of picks in 2024, right? This upcoming draft, nobody seems to want to uh, get rid of any picks. So now we're going to simulate on ahead to the middle of September where we are going to see who is going to be the assistant captains and everything. Nah, I don't need them uh, on this team to start the season. Oh, no, I didn't do it again. Oh, man, my voice is worn out. My voice is so dead. Okay, what are we doing here? All right, there we go. So we're back. View owner goals. Sellers. My expectations are low. I want 19 sellouts this year. Yeah. I want us to earn at least 86% of my 3.5 million expected profit. I want you to build a new parking lot. Not going to do that. Team store. Not going to do that. But they don't care if we make the playoffs. And that's great. So what we're going to do first is set captains. It's our first year, so we're not going to have a captain. Bo Horvat. Yes, you can be an assistant captain. Uh, I'm thinking Tarasenko probably is an assistant. Ghost, I don't think so. You don't really strike me as an assistant captain. Um, to be 100%, I do like to have a defenseman that is an assistant captain. And I think it would either be Kulak or Manson. I got to say, I think Manson. Manson, you can be the assistant. All right. Now let's take a look at what these lines are going to look like. I have my lineup all mapped out already. I don't I don't know if that's necessarily what it's going to look like, but here we go, baby. Wow, yeah, okay, so that's exactly what I wanted. <laughs> and then it was Nyquist, Backland, and Trevor Moore. That's what I wanted. Uh, Matthew Joseph, Philip Heedel, and Craig Smith. I like that just fine. And then it was... Blackwell, Duhame, and McLeod. But Keegan Colasar is a nice option, too. Fits very well on that fourth line. Um, Duhame also does, though. That's the thing. They want to scratch Brett Kulak. Wow. So this team is not brutal. They, they did basically have my lines exactly the way I wanted them. Matthew Joseph fits really well on that second line, though. Er, he'll get there. He'll get there. He's only 25. <laughs> but man, what an what an old number one line. This team's got some age to it. You know what I mean? But I really do like that that third line quite a bit. On defense, we got Ghost. I want a Ghost and Manson. Um, what else? Dahan and Montour, Fairvari and Timothy Lilligren on that third pairing. They fit kind of and kind of. See, he only has top 6D potential, so I don't want to put him too high, right? Calvin DeHaan, we got Brandon Montour, who does not fit. And I think that's why they wanted me to put him up there. But Manson fits beautifully, and Ghost fits pretty darn well as well. And then in net, we have got Nadelkovich, who just signed a four-year contract. We also have Yuko Pekalukinen, who's on the last year of his contract. So for scratches, we've got Kulak who fits well everywhere, man. And Brandon Duhame, who again, fits well everywhere. I think these, these are good for, um, you know, these are good for scratch players. Brett Kulak always have a defenseman who like, look at this. He can jump in any line and he'll be fine. And then you got Brandon Duhame fits relatively well on most lines. We can juggle it around. Those are good people to have as, uh, as backup players. So I'm totally fine with that. Now let's take a look at the AHL where I do kind of want, Ooh, Nylander doesn't really fit anywhere. I would rather have Nylander on the top line than Yasik. We got Abrazizi and Ratcliffe, Axel Janssen, Fialbi, 
with Thomas Novak, Damiani, Gadjevic, Ladnia, Seneshin, Nate Schnarr, and Valtteri Pustinen. On defense, Dennis Chelowski and Sammy Niku. But it's Chelowski that doesn't fit literally anywhere. <laughs> so I think Capobianco is going up there. Capobianco, I should say. Uh, Linus Nassen. He fits everywhere. And it's Dennis Chelowski. Chelowski is the weak link. Will this go through? Chelowski for you, Alevi? It did. Oh, I love it. Okay, go to roster moves. Don't tell me he's up in the NHL. He is too. Now I got to send him down. There's no waivers yet, though. We're not like at the preseason or nothing. So let's go to edit AHL lines. Let's figure this out. Go back to defense and see where Ollie Uolevi fits. Absolutely nowhere. <laughs> oh my God. Well, screw it. I don't think they're a minus three. Go back to edit lines. What are you? Two way defender. You're a two-way defender. So here's what you got to do. Ah, oh, hold on. So now we'll back out of it. And then we're going to go back into edit lines because I can't imagine it's a minus three. It's a minus one. This guy doesn't fit quite perfectly. But uh, which one was it? Not you, Linus Nassen. Ha ha! I win. There you go. So now we got Eric. Oh, Hjorth. Two-way defender. Emily Rassanen. <laughs> Good enough for me. That's fine. It's fine. I don't mind. Let's do it. And in net, Connor Ingram and Olivier Rodrigue. So, we're looking solid, man. We got a good team. All right. Well, I dove into that game against the Toronto Maple Leafs, got ourselves a little thumbnail, and that is where we're going to call it for this first episode of the franchise mode. I didn't want it to be too unbelievably long, you know what I mean? But uh, I am going to edit the special teams and everything. I'll get that all figured out. So next time when we jump into this series, episode two, everything will be all set up. We can just jump on the ice. You know what I mean? All right. Feels good to finally have this video out. My voice is dead. I'm going to have to drink a tea or something. <laughs> Anyway, that's going to do it for me for this one. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you haven't already. There's new videos coming all the freaking time. And until next time, you beautiful melon farmers, have a good one.